up our womb. We're going to pray this prayer. The Bible said that um, God, the Bible said that um, the husband of Anna loved her and he gave her, Elkanah love her, he gave her a worthy person. Praise God. But still, yeah, there was something that was missing in Anna's life. Praise God. And the Bible said because of Anna's condition, she was mocked. Amen. Because she was according to people, she was not living according to the standard. Hallelujah. And the Bible say they have done, they have been doing that to her for many years. But the funny thing about God, sometimes the enemy did not know that the reason why God sometimes holds you, or the reason why you are delayed, because you're not just carrying any baby, you're carrying a Samuel. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Have you ever heard of the other children of um, Elkanah? Do you know who they are? Do you know their history? Amen. Praise God. So somebody can start late, can still become the latest. Amen. You can start, you can even start, you can even be on the game for a very long time and not seems to be happening. But when God time come, I love this song. When my season come, I'll be all right. When your season come, you'll be all right. We're going to pray this prayer. Say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. As I begin to pray. 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 Like Anna. Like Anna. Wipe out my tears. Wipe out my tears. Wipe out my tears. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lick up a doza. in Jesus name there is one thing I sense and there is one thing there is one thing the devil tried to do to you while you wait for God to intervene hallelujah I believe Anna went through the same thing discouragement hallelujah somebody said discouragement say it will not infect me say discouragement will not infect me it will not infect my spirit you know when we discourage that the time we start looking at what somebody else is doing yes, oh if he's not doing it i'm not doing it too amen yes, <laughs> praise god amen. if this person is not doing i'm not doing that that's when discourage begin to creep in hallelujah and that happened when you are at the edge of your breakthrough at the edge every time you're close to something big that the time the devil comes to bring something silly amen, amen. many people sometimes when they were when we are close to a breakthrough then they do something that actually anger God. Are you with me? You're going to pray. Say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. maker. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Every spirit of discouragement. Every spirit of discouragement. As I pray now. As I pray now. Expire. 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 Open your mouth and fire prayer. Every spirit of discouragement. As I pray now. Expire. 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 Shabra kata 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 kata
discouragement and is trying to infest Lord your people that is trying to infest us Lord they affect us as we pray now Shabagadusa be destroyed be destroyed be destroyed be destroyed Shakata Baribadusa In Jesus name. Amen. The Bible says in the book in the in the same um chapter in verse one it says now there was a certain man of Ramathia Zophim of the Mount of Ephraim and they call his name whose name was Alkena. Now, if you look at the translation of the name, the word <laughs> Amasia Zophar means that um, the height of views. The height of what? The height where you see things, where you can see things. Like being in a mountaintop. Amen? And the word if we mean God created. So, in other words, <laughs> Anna and Elkanah, they were in the, they in the heights where God created, where they can see things, where they can achieve things, but Anna life was not looking at looking at the position where she found herself. Amen. She was in the height of view that God has created, but her life was not looking the way it's supposed to. The Bible says in the book of Acts, Acts chapter three, right? The Bible said there was a man, right? At chapter three, there was a man at the gate called what? Talk to me, beautiful. Amen. But his life was not beautiful. We're going to pray. Have you, this ever happened to you? I've seen people come to you and say, uh, "Can you borrow me fourteen thousand dollars?" Oh, can, I, can I please borrow $20,000? I'll give you back in futures. <laughs> it happened to me all the time. People are like, ah, Pastor Paul, can you please? I need a loan for 15000 I said, ah, hmm. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> are you with me? Yeah? Amen. <laughs> because when they hear that you're a pastor, you're this, ah, people think that you have all the money in the world. Hallelujah. But we're getting there. You're going to pray. Say, Father, make me positive that people see me make me as positive that people see me lord if they see me as a millionaire make me a millionaire amen if they see me lord as a billionaire make me a billionaire amen. make me make me lord as the as the good people in my life see me the good thing they see me lord make me that open the mouth and pray that prayer <laughs> Shababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab
in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Hallelujah. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul does. First time chapter 17. Burns within me. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul thirst burns with me. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul burst, burns with me. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul does burns with me. I feel Jesus in this place, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in right now. In today, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, heart of my heart, heart of my heart, shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. Shine out today, shine out right now, shine out of my heart, Lord Jesus. He touched me, He touched me, and oh, a joy that floods my soul. Something happen, and well, I know He touched me and me. Me home, he touched me, he touched me, and oh, what joy that floods my soul! Something happened. And yes, I know He touched me 
جہان میں نیم آف جیز از گریڈا اینڈ مائی تھی آن ریس ناٹ اینڈ آ دین آو نیم اٹس اے نیم دیٹ از فل آف پاور اینڈ گریس دا نیم لوڈ نیم دا نیم آف جیز is greater and stronger than on earth it is not an ordinary name it's a name that is full of power and grace at the name at the name of sickness must bow demon tremble at the sound of the name it is not an ordinary name it has a name that is full of power and grace thank you jesus thank you lord god bless you god bless you pastor madosa thank you for the backup glory to god let's turn to first summer 17 if you don't mind Glory to Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to preach for long by God's grace. It came to pass that when the Philistine arose was 48. It came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drawn out to meet David and David aged it and ran towards the army hmm, to meet Philistine, the Philistine and David put his hand in his bag and took ends of stone and slung it and smote the philistine on the forehead and the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth so david prevailed over the philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of david holy spirit help me i just got another message now praise god for another time hallelujah praise god is that in your bible That was he slayed the Philistine, but there was no sword in his hand. Amen. Let's go jump to verse 14. So you kind of read it erratically like this. So David gathered his sword and, and sword upon his uh, gathered his sword upon his armor and assuage to go, for he um for he has not proved it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And verse 14, this is intriguing. Say, and he took his staff in his hand and chose his five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, which he had even in, in the scribe. And his sling was in his hand, and they drew nigh to the Philistine. You know, when people get new things, they usually ignore the old. Hallelujah. Praise God. Once somebody got a new stuff, they, want to, they don't want to talk about, they don't want to even deal with the old stuff they have. And yeah, that's why in nowadays, amen, people, you say, man, amen, God help us. Verse 41, we'll come there. Verse 41, the Philistine came on and drew not unto David, and the man that, that bear the shield went before. Amen. And when the Philistine looked about David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth and a rowdy of a fear countenance. And David and, and the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest unto me with a stave? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh unto the fowls of the heer, unto the bats, for, and the bats of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear, with a shield, by I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. The armies of Israel, whom thou have defiled. Verse 46 And this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will smooth thee and take thy head from thy neck, and I will give thy carcasses to the host of the Phil Philistine this day unto the fowls of the year, to the wild beasts of earth, that all the earth might know that there is a God in Israel. I want to continue with our topic. We have been preaching for the past three weeks. This confrontation must 
end. And maybe if you are seated, please look at the person by your side. Say, say neighbor, I welcome you to church. Today is your day of breakthrough. Amen. Sit down like a royalty that you are. Hallelujah. This, Mr. Maya, God bless you. Welcome. Amen. Um, this confrontation must end. Stop because what stop sometimes can start. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this confrontation must what? End. Now we have gone through some few things from this verse from this chapter of scripture, and we cannot uh, we cannot finish it. Hallelujah. Praise God. We talked about last week. Let's recap for a second here. We talked said we, we what we're talking about said that God deals with the end time church in three dimensions, right? Those of you that I remember if you if you're not here last week, you can always watch it online. We said that God deal first of all to the what evangelistic dimension. Praise God. The second we'll talk about is what? Amen. Talk to me, people. Amen. Talk to me. What we what the second we talk about last week? Apostolic was the last one. Prophetic dimension. We talk about three things. Hallelujah. For those of you that um not writing. Evangelistic dimension. We say preaching the gospel to the poor. We go to Luke 4, verse 18. And Jesus said, The Spirit of God is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach the levant to the captive, and open a prison to them. The coming of the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptability of the London. The Bible says he closed the book. It was quoting from Isaiah 61, verse 2. Amen. The second, we talk about the prophetic dimension. Say, pointing and identifying the past, present, and future. And we quoted the Acts chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, it came to pass in the last days, says the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit from Joel chapter 2 that um, Peter was quoting from. And the last thing we talked about, the second, third dimension is the apostolic dimension. So taking individual and family by force from one level to the next. So every ministry, every major ministry that is making waves on this earth operate in these three dimensions. Amen. Some more than others. But every ministry that is making waves, everyone that God has called that is making mark on this world, they operate in these three dimensions. Amen. Praise God. Are you with me here? Amen. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the apostolic dimension before going to our text today. Praise God. I mean, there are different contexts. There are, there are many different facets or contexts of the apostolic, uh, apostolic movement, apostolic church. Praise God. We said the apostolic is not a title. Amen. It's an office. Amen. Praise God. So the fact that somebody calls himself an apostle doesn't mean that he's an apostle. Hallelujah. There are, there are traits, there are mark of an apostle. Let me talk about it briefly. The first mark of an apostle, you must first of all have seen Jesus. Amen? You must have seen Jesus physically or you have a revelation that is in undeniable. Either to, you have seen Jesus physically or seen Jesus through the word in a dimension that nobody can... When, when you preach, people know that this one have actually had the revelation of Jesus. Amen. How do I know that the Bible said that Paul said that am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Christ? Amen. So the mark of an apostle, you must have seen Jesus. Are you with me here? We said there are three dimensions of the apostolic of the apostle. The first one we said that three types of apostles, four types of apostles, rather. The first one we said that the chief apostle um, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Amen. The second one, the 12 apostle of the Lamb, Revelation 21, verse 14, foundation and transitional apostles, amen, which the apostles were. Amen. And those one that came before them, rather. And the last one, Ascension Apostle. Amen. Praise God. Are you with me here? Praise God. We said that our Father and the Lord and all the major apostles, like even some of them that don't call themselves apostles. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to begin to name drop here. Amen. But major ministries in Nigeria, major ministries here that actually you can know these people have the apostolic apostolic office in them. Amen. Now, in Galatians 2, verse 7 to 10, the Bible says, Gabriel gives us, show us the parameters of apostle, the details, and what you will see when an apostle minister, when you experience an apostolic church. The first one, the Bible says in, in Galatians 2 verse 7, you can put that on the screen if you can, please. Say, but counterwise, when they saw the gospel 
of the uncircumcised was committed to me as the gospel of the circumcised was unto Peter. So in other words, an apostle, gospel is committed to them. Say verse 2, for he that wrought effectively in the Peter to the apostolic sheep of the circumcision, the same was mighty towards the Gentiles. Verse 9, say, and when James and Cyprus and John, who seems to be pillar, perceived the grace. Somebody say grace. Somebody say grace. Somebody say grace. So an apostle is a man that have grace. Grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barabbas the right and the fellowship that, that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Only they sure that we should remember the poor, the same which also I was doing. Amen. There are three things here. I don't have time to lay out some of the major things that's in here. But the first thing, the first thing the apostle does, the first thing you see when an apostle minister, an apostolic church minister, they they are a church that pursue the gospel, they preach the gospel. Number two, an apostle, apostolic church is a church that is graced filled. Somebody say graced filled. An apostolic church is the third one. It's a great, it's a church that is people centered. Preach the gospel, grace filled, people centered. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's go now to what we're talking about. So if you look at if you the reason I describe all those ones because the God deal with the people in the old testament time, it meant through the prophets. Amen. All these men, they are not called apostles in the Old Testament. But if you begin to look at their ministry, including David, you see that those signs of an apostle was in them. Amen. It's all in the New Testament begin to define what these things are. Are you with me here? The Bible says, let's go back to the text. I said that to say this because if you look at the life of David, David, you can look at the life of David and, and, and compare it to many of the New Testament, New Testament apostles. Are you with me? David was, was a prophet. Are you with me? Huh? He was a prophet. He was a king. In the New Testament, we are king and queen, right? We are also priest. David also also have the priestly anointing upon his life. Are you with me? The Bible says here that David. We are, the Bible says that David faced Goliath here. The first thing that happened that when when he spoke with with um, uh, King Saul, the Bible said that King Saul tried to give him something. Amen. That he thought was going to help him. Amen. I want to start by saying that be careful what people give to you. Amen. You got to be careful what you take from people. Because yeah, what, what Saul was trying to do here, it was, I believe Saul was trying to do the right thing according to him. But that was the wrong move for David. If David should have put on those things and go face Goliath, there is no way he could have defeated him. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, there are a lot of people that are trying. They know it does not work, but they still try. Don't ever change sheep. Don't ever change sheep when the sheep is going the right direction. The fact that you cannot see where the sheep is going doesn't mean that the sheep is heading for the wrong direction. The Bible said that David got them. When he put on all the hammer, I was going to bring the hammer today. I forgot to bring this hammer to where it's so that you see what I'm talking about. <laughs> When David put all the hammer, Bible said that as he, was, as he was moving, it was too heavy for him. And he said, he said, King, I have not tried this. I have not what? I have not tried this. The Bible, what the Bible said, the next verse said, the Bible said that he, he dropped it. And what did happen? Bible said he went back to what works. He went to the brook and put some stone in the shepherd. In his what? Don't ever throw away the old because you have experienced it. Are you with me? Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I learned from Papa. Amen. Sometimes people get mad, like, why Papa? Like this person is terrible. Papa don't know. <laughs> Even if you are terrible, Papa would. <laughs> Amen. That's some of the that's some of the mystery that a lot of people don't understand about God's heaven. Amen. The one thing I like about Papa, there are a lot of things I don't like about him. He doesn't forget them. There are many of us because we have seen you, we forsake the whole. This one I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I let's put this one in the corner. We have a new one. All of us are like that. If I if I get a new stuff, I I'm very attached to it because it's new. And when you get old, I put it in one corner for <laughs> the next new thing. Amen. 
but that's not the way we should treat life are you with me he said i have not tried this and the Bible said he went back to the old way bible said scripture declared that we should go to the old earth and look for those people that have been there before and learn from them amen he said, and he took his staff in his hand and threw and choose him five smooth stones. I don't want to go into that because I believe you have here preaching to talk about five minutes, five is the number of grace, another blah, blah, blah. I'm not going into all that. You know that one. Out of his book. And, and, and shepherds back, which he have in his stripe. And his sling was in his hand and junior to the Philistine. The Bible said that he always have that shepherd back with him. The fact that God has blessed you does not mean that you forsake your old friends. They say that because you are in the edge of breaking and something, something is going to happen. They say, oh, let me leave this one so I don't, you know. These ones, they have expired now. Let me look for the news. Amen? If the confrontation must end in your life, praise God, don't forget that there are things that you are doing that works. Go back to them. What did, what did, what did, what did Jesus say to the, the church? He said, go back to your first love. Go back to your what? Your what? Your first love. Your first love. Your what? Your first. He said, Philistine came to and drew near to David, and the, the man that bear the shield went before him. The man that bear the shield went before who? Him. He said, and when the Philistine looked about, he saw David, he disdained him for he so he was but a youth and round in countenance. Point number this point number two, right? Number three. Point number three. Point number three. Once, ah, uh, point number three. Once you have, once you have already analyzed your enemy, once you have already see what you have already see the conversation, you might identify what the matter is. Amen. The Bible said that when David saw him, he knew exactly what was going on. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible said that there are two things that David did that I like. The Bible said that he walked towards him. Amen. He ran towards him and Goliath ran towards David. Three, seven, but three and four. Bible said that um, said, and the Philistines stood on the mountain on the other side, and, and Israel stood on the other mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Amen. And there are two things that David did. The first thing he did, Bible said that Bible said that he said, and very said unto him, David come unto me and give he said, I will give you a flesh of the carcass of the fowls of the year and the bat, bat, uh, beast of the field. And the Bible said that David said to him that. I am not fighting you in my own name. Amen. The reason why many people lose battle, man of God, because we boast too much on our anointing. See me, I'm very anointed. I pray for you, or your problem will go. <laughs> if I pray for you, you know, if I pray for you, all your problem will depart. And the Bible said that when they be faced to life, he said to him. I curse you in the name of my God. Amen. Anytime you put God in the sport, God always deliver. Amen. Anytime you put God, every time you call God, the evil boy called God and God never failed them. Have you ever called God and God failed you? Amen. You should be afraid of a man that knows God. Afraid of a man that have a covenant, a man that works with God. When I say man, I mean male and female. Amen? A person that walks with you, you must, if you don't fear nobody, expect those ones. I want, I want to stop and insert this. I might not shout today. I want to stop and insert this. Amen? Don't you ever, don't you ever accuse someone. Even if they're accusing somebody, you know exactly what the stuff is. Don't you ever join in an accusation. Because you don't know the kind of covenant people have with them. Amen. The reason why it's God to forgive people when they hurt you. Amen. Because you might be mad at the person and the person might have gone to God and said, God forgive me for whatever they did. Amen. You might, you might dwell on that same thing. That person might have already passed that stuff. You might dwell on it and you might, you might you say to yourself, oh, I will never forget. I will never forget. You're hurting yourself. You're not hurting the person. Amen. The Bible said that David moved to her. It cost him in the name of his God. And there are, there are two things that Goliath did. The first thing that Goliath did that caused him to, caused David to defeat him, he underestimated David. 
Amen. You what? You underestimate. Don't ever underestimate a battle. That which you refuse to deal with today, we deal with you tomorrow. Are you with me? That which you refuse to. It, uh, we, we said last week, this battle will be going on for 40 days. Though. For 40 days. Not like it started today. 40 days. Amen. So thought because if you ignored Goliath, you just stayed there and that face to face, maybe think that the thing will depart. What happened? They believe that they don't even talk about some of the fraud that 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 that, that, that Saul did. Amen. One of the biggest major mistakes that Saul made is disdain his prophet. Amen. You know about Goliath, he God did not just appear from thin hair. Goliath emerged because Saul was disobedient to authority. You remember before this happened in chapter 16, 15, the Bible said that God sent him to go kill the Amalekites. They killed all of them, including their children. But so when he went there, he decided to, to exercise, how they call it again, discretion. He decided to exercise discretion. Say, you know what? You need to be really diplomatic in this situation. I'm a king. I need to be kingly. So let's leave some good animal and don't kill this one. <laughs> Amen. And when, when, when Saul asked, you know what he said? You know, I, I thought, I, I just made a, a six, second, six second judgment, you know. I, I assessed the situation. I decided you know, that this is the right course to take. <laughs> and someone said, why have you decided to disobey God? And the Bible said, that's why his kingdom fall. He said, because you refuse to do what the God, tell, God tells you. He said, today, you have rigged the kingdom for me. Amen? So what brought Goliath? You know, when we talk about Goliath, we don't talk about what actually the cause, which cause of Goliath. What brought Goliath was disobedience. Because God promised the people, say, anytime you disobey me, you go against me, I'm going to, I'm going to arise you, and I'm going to cause your enemy to come against you. He said in Genesis, Gen you, you read the Bible, Gen 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 28, he said your enemy will pound you until you, you have become dust. Amen? So he began to make one mistake after the other, one mistake after the other. He began to equate himself with the man that was higher than him. Let me tell you, in life, there is always someone that's going to be higher than you. Get used to it. There is always somebody that just business thing that is going to be the only richest man in the world until Eli must overtake him. <laughs> there is somebody else that's going to overtake Eli. There is always some, going to be someone richer. Are you with me? So, uh, so we should we decide in our heart that this is inevitable. So when Goliath looked at David, he looked at where David was. He didn't look at where David was going. David said to him, like <laughs> in my own words, said that you're looking at me now. How maybe I'm not dressed well. I don't look like I don't look like I'm going somewhere. And I love David's confidence. One of the things you should have as a Christian is confidence. If I have a four, point number four here, if I have a point number four in this message, I will say that. You must not, you must not, you must not, you must not let go of your confidence. <laughs> a nine feet, six inches man. I said to us in the Bible study that, 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 that Goliath was, a, was from the lineage of the Nephilim. Nephilim were the, were the children of, were the children of, 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 of mating of angels and man. That gave back to giants. Goliath was one of them. The, the giants, some the Goliath, they, they live in Philistia. Philistia. Amen? Amen? So people know these people. At the Anak, these people are giants. These are tall, massive. So by virtue of their size alone, intimidated them. When they, when they said, that's why they were afraid. But the Bible said that David had the confidence of his God. He said, You come to me. In the name of your God. He said, I came to, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Watch this one. The word Lord of hosts is the commander 
of the armies of God. So when David, you don't understand, when David put that stone on that thing, it was not David that slinged that thing. That stone cannot kill a fly. Amen. Praise God. As much as he can be deadly, but that man was nine feet six inches. I even I even, I even be be uh, bold to say that he weighed by maybe a ton. Because Bible said when when he, when he, when he walked the ground shakes. Boom, boom, boom. If Goliath is walking in the street, yeah, yeah, the, the gun vibrated. <laughs> Are you with me here? But the confidence of David was unshaken. His confidence was not in his ability. His confidence was in the ability of God to perform. He said to them, he said, I have seen this before where God delivered me. Are you with me here? Praise God. So what happened when the when the soldier presented, he didn't run away. Bible says he ran towards Goliath. I believe in Goliath's head. Eh? He was saying, ah, look at this small boy. As he was running. <laughs> look at this small boy. He's not even afraid to run towards me. But he ran towards the army. You know, I thought it was only Goliath that he ran towards him. In other words, the entire army that was running towards him, he was running towards them. And I believe the coward was, the Islamic coward, they were standing in the back watching. <laughs> Are you with me here? Praise God. And they landed this one. So the first mistake that Goliath had made, he what? He what? He underestimated David. I said, never underestimate battle. Don't ever underestimate the battle. If something is happening in your life, deal with it. Amen. If you let it linger, it might become something that you cannot control. Anything you fish to do will be will metamorphosize to something that you cannot recognize. Amen. A battle, a challenge that's supposed to last a day, lasted for 40 days. It lasted more than that if God did not, if God did not decide to rescue them through them. I prophesy upon your life. May God give you insight. I say in battle, may God give you insight. I say in battles, may God give you insight. I say in battles, may God give you insight. I say in battle, may God give you insight. I want to just make another point quickly. Amen. The Bible said that the Philistine came from where? Gath. Amen. Gath. <laughs> the name of the Gath is so funny. Gath. Amen. Praise God. So every battle has an origin. Amen. Every battle has a what? An origin. Amen. So you must first of all know where it comes from. Amen. Point number what? Number five. You must be strategically strategic. <laughs> you must be what? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I defend strategy as the art of employing biblical principle, such as prayers, fasting, and the word of God to accomplish to accomplish a maximize with maximum result rather in any given situation. Statute in this context, the art of what? Employing biblical principles such as prayer, fasting. Amen. I'll include I include also the um the anointing of your prophet. <laughs> the word of God to accomplish maximum result in any given situation. Luke 18 verse 4, 14 verse 3, 28 to 32 Bible says if anyone want to build a house first of all sit down and count the what? The cost. Say if you intend to build a tower sit there not down and first count the cost whether you have sufficient to finish it less happily after you have done, after you have laid the foundation and they are able to finish that all that be only begin to mock so you must be strategic. Whenever a problem comes, don't just rush with it first. David, first of all, analyze it. That's why he asks questions. You know, David should have just go and say, you know what, I'm going to fight. Amen. He didn't do it. What did he do? He said, ask what is going on. What is the situation? Okay, what can be done? What are the results? What are the outcomes? Amen. Anytime you want to build something, you want to do anything, even in business, you have to first of all, you have what they call cost analysis. Am I right or yes? Amen. Even if you want to build a place in, if you want to build, let me say for example, you want to build a, a mansion close to the ocean. Like what they call feasibility study. First of all, you must first of all study the ground you want to put the building. So if I put the building in this ground, whether if erosion comes, this thing is going to sink. 
And my time goes on, the, 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 the foundation is going to sink. Are you with me? So you must first of all analyze the soil. Praise God. These are many people who are defeated in battle because they are quick to run. Africans, <laughs> I don't want to say my wife, they get mad at me. But I want to say, say specific people. <laughs> Africans, they like to rush. <laughs> Africans. <laughs> Africans, they like to rush into everything. They will not, they will not first of all analyze it. Go, ah, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Amen. But have you seen the West? Do you think America didn't have the power to go and um, fight against Russia? When they started, I said, you know what? Russia have 12,000 nuclear weapons. Only five can turn this wall into a hot pot. So let's slow down. <laughs> you see how they begin to, is how they begin to, the first thing they did, oh, we're not going to send any weapon. We're going to send plane. Then they begin to send. When it, three months now, when you see everybody's supporting, we'll say, okay, let's start sending those other things now. Send for the formula. They analyze it first. Amen. There is this Chinese, this Chinese, this Chinese strategy. His name is Sang Shu. He said that in a thousand battle, if you know yourself and the enemy, in a thousand battle, you win. So you must first of all study your enemy. Jesus says to us, Matthew 4, uh, the book, I think Luke chapter 14, but 32. He said you must first of all sit down and what? Count the cost. Amen. Sit down and what? Count the cost. Look at the 14, 28, 30, to count the cost. Whether you'll be able to finish what you start. So in every battle, sit down, locate first the source of the battle, sit down and say, okay, am I going to approach this? Is it fasting prayer or is it I'm giving? There are some battles you don't need to pray for. There are some battles only praise can solve it. Amen? But if a battle that praise can solve, you use prayer, you're wasting your time. You're wasting prayer. Don't worry, you don't waste it because they put it in bank for something else. If he, God say, if when, when God wanted to when God wanted to part the Red Sea, the, the, the Jordan, right? When he wanted to push the Jordan back, in Red Sea he said they should go on and they should go and step in and the what? And the open, right? But in the Jordan he said they should bring the Levite. People that carry the hack, they must carry the when they call the hack is singing, as they touch Jordan. Bible said that Jordan say, ah, this is too much for me. Government went back. But what, 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 how, how did that happen? It was to praise. The same thing happened also when the Bible said that. The Bible said that the, 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 the people of Israel were surrounded by the enemy. The enemy was so much for them. And God said, Come back to you, you're not going to fight. And then go up there and say, What should we do? He said, Let Judah go first. Let praise go first. So in the battle that you're supposed to praise, if you pray, it doesn't work. In the battle you're supposed to pray, if you are praising, it doesn't work. So you must first of all know what is required for that specific battle. David knew that armor was not required for this battle. He required a stone. He required what? A stone. Not two, not three. David just took those. Uh, if you begin to look, if you read book, Papa book, I just remember that I read that book many, many years ago. I've read almost everything that Papa wrote, except the new ones he's written. I've not bought those. Ones. Amen. Praise <laughs> God. In, in, the, in, the, in, in the book of uh, we talk about Goliath he said that those four in the book I read those four stones that he left if he count the giant that were left they were chasing David there are four extra giant that came <laughs> are you with me? praise God so David said this is one for Goliath and one for Goliath cousin <laughs> great, 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 great cousin <laughs> and uncles <laughs> Because we got to discover that Goliath was actually a junior brother. You got a giant that, that David, one of David's commander face was even bigger than Goliath. I hit me. So every level you change, there is always increase of battles. I hit me. Every level you change, there is always an increase of battles. So you must what? You must what? Know your enemy. Know the strength and limit of your opponent. It's very vital not to overestimate, not to overestimate or underestimate your opponent. Hallelujah. America didn't know that Russia didn't have all those weapons they claim until when when the, when communism failed for. Amen. That they discovered they were just hyping things up. Evaluate your strengths and possible weaknesses or flaws. Amen. And the last thing you must do, you must confront 
the confrontation. Now, what's David doing here? And Bible says, the end, the, the end of all things. But it came to pass as when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to David, that David hastened and ran towards the army and met the Philistine. And David put his hand in his back and took and a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling. Amen. And the last thing that happened here. I brought this sword. I'm not going to waste it. Amen. There we said that David take a sword. You know, after you defeat your enemy with prayer, you finish them with the word. Amen. <laughs> the sword represents the word. The Bible says he took Goliath's sword. As Goliath's sword was lying down, he took it and took it out of the case. You whack him in the head. Amen. And if you read scripture, the Bible said that that was a sword that David threw out his reign. He carried that sword with him. Amen. You keep what you kill. You what? You keep what you kill. <laughs> Amen. After David cut his head, the Bible said he, 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 he kept the sword. Praise God. And that's the same sword he used to, to defeat nations. Hallelujah. Because David was a man that everything that works, he doesn't change. I don't know what I'm talking to. This. What used to work before? Why do you stop doing The problem with the church today, we like to try things that are not even scriptural. Because somebody else is doing it, I'm going to do it too. If it's right for this, what is good for the what? I hate that saying. Whoever invented that, that person is up. With <laughs> it, good for the gang. What is that? Ganja, Ga what doesn't make no sense. Not like a foreign language. Praise God, are <laughs> you with me? Praise God. But David did not, David, the same sword that he used to kill Goliath. I say, use that sword also to defeat many, many. Okay, point, last point. Last point. What work? For one, what work for one battle might not work in the other battle because sling worked the first time, and that was the only time he used it. David used a sling when he was a shepherd boy, when he ultimately defeated Goliath. When he graduated from defeating Goliath, the next thing that he, the next weapon that was he used was a sword. So that's why we need to be close to God, we need to hear from God. Let's stand up. I mean, because at any given point, the Lord is telling us what we must do. Amen. The reason why many people today, man of God, they are facing confrontation and they are being and they are being they are being, you know, uh, 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 beaten down because because they're using the same strategy they used to use before. Amen. How I many of you know the devil did not use the? It's not. He's using the same strategy, but he always, he always, he always recycled it. Amen. He cycle it to make it look different. Be innovative. Amen. Be what? Be what? If you are praying a prayer, you are praying for somebody to somebody is trying to make you expire. I told us here many years ago when I was suffering unnecessarily. I got to discover that somebody that was close that was in charge of those things. Amen. I'm not gonna name names because some people are watching me. Praise God. I decided to go on an all-night stabbing. Oh, yeah. I didn't call anybody name. I was just stabbing all night. Whoever is against me, I use a knife. Cool, cool, cool. One week, somebody had another attack. And one week later, they die. I don't tell me it's coincidence. Amen? When he died, that was the only time I was able to go to college and register. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But for many, many years, people pray for me. Men of God pray for me. They fasted, I fasted, I pray. Until the Holy Ghost said, change the statute and do something. I want to challenge you today, like David did. After I killed Goliath with a sword, with a sling, with a stone. And later I took Goliath's sword. Amen. If you are doing something today, it doesn't work. Change it. And if it's working, don't change it. God tell you to change it. God bless you. You're going to pray one prayer. I love my sword.
Pat your pastor Mike. You're gonna open your mouth and put this place. Say, my father, my God. Father, my as God. I begin to pray, as I begin to as pray, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray. To pray. Any unseen battle, any unseen battle, and seen manifestation, unseen manifestation. Let me explain this. Any unseen battle, and seen manifestation. Because when the, when the devil is fighting you, they are invisible, but you seen the effect of that battle. Yes, sir. Every unseen battle. Every unseen battle. Every unseen battle, every unseen battle, and seen manifestation, and seen manifestation in my life, in my, life, in my family, in my family. As I pray now, you end today. You end today. Open your mouth and pray a prayer. Shaba baba baba gada baba gada 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 Every unseen battle and seen manifestation as I pray now. Shata ta karubusha, jede de 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 sha, jede de 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 sha. Expire, expire. End today, end today, end today. You end today, you end today. Shababa te katuta. In Jesus' name. Amen. There is what one last prayer. There is what called prolonged battle. Amen. I'm doing it by instruction because the Holy Ghost every time you preach, pray in the beginning and pray at the end. Amen. You want to pray? There is what they call. There is what they call um prolonged battle. How many of us know that there, there is a place they call evil market? Amen. Evil market where people destinies are in exchange. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes your finance and your health, sometimes what you need to do, you need to go before God and ask God, wherever my life, my future, my health, my finance being exchanged, as I pray now, be destroyed. Hallelujah. Now when you pray, you're not praying against a person, you're praying against a spirit. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid that you're going to hit a person. No, your prayer can't do anything without the, without the Holy Ghost. Are you with me here? You're going to pray this prayer. Say, my father, my God. My father, my God. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Anything that represents a Goliath. Anything that represents a Goliath. Or Philistines. Or Philistines. In my life. In my life. In my family. In my family. As I pray now. As I pray now. God down by fire. Go down by fire. Open the mouth and pray that prayer. Shabagada Gadegadeza. Zekrekata. Go down. Go down. Go down by fire. Shakata. In Jesus, mighty name, Father, connect to grace. I pray for this one, Lord. They will never again be defeated in battles. I pray for anyone that have a health challenge in any way, in any form. I decree by the force of grace that you are healed in the name of Jesus. That you are healed in the name of Jesus. That you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for those that believe in you for a miracle. Yes, Lord. I pray that this week will not pass. Amen. Give the miracles. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. Amen. I am so, so, so excited. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like elated today. I'm always happy, but today I have, I'm extra happy. 
Hallelujah. Somebody clap for Jesus. Take our offering and tithe quickly. A tithe and offering quickly. Mom was forgetting. I wanted to. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 we praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We praise your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's touch our hand as this uh, woman of God. Hallelujah. God wants to use you. Uh, what's your name? God wants you. God wants to work for God. You ready to work for God? Tell you want to work and pray for her. Hallelujah. Pray for God's perfect will in her life. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I'll give you praise. I'll give you glory. Jesus, mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, Ify. Amen. Are you are you are you you're born again, right? Are you a born again believer? Okay. Amen. God bless you. Glory to Jesus. Put your right on your head. Say my oh, okay. You don't mind if I pray for you? Come on. I cannot forget that. Glory to God. Please let's touch your hand towards our pastor. Pastor Mike. Hallelujah. They're not, they're not going to be with us for a little while. Amen. We want to pray that God will go with them. I got a 19 wheel. You know, we dispatch them to the grace of our Father. Will manifest in their life. As they go to attend to what they need to attend to. It's God's vineyard. That's what I'm going to pray for them. Begin to pray for them. Hallelujah. Begin to pray for them. Hallelujah. Let me hear your voice. Begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Libra katabadi babebebegadosha. Zegre kapaka shede bede bush, libra karabadusha, zide de de bedush. Lord, I pray for your servant. Pray for the manifestation of your power in the mighty name of the grace that has walked in our Father's life. Let it begin to manifest in His life in the increased measure. Blind see, lame walk, power released in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the prophetic anointing we are we are in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your daughter. Lord, take her to where she needs to be in you. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. I pray for the kids. Pray for trouble and mercies. Pray, Lord, for accomplishments. Jesus' name. I pray for your son. Manifestation of power. Jesus, I pray, Lord, for your son. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For keeping him, for using him, for giving him good health. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the God of his life. You are the God in his life. Thank you, Lord, because you defile all medical report. 
to the glory of your name. Thank you for your power. Give you praise. Perfect. Perfection. Perfect at which you started in his life. Jesus name. Thank you for your son Lord. Thank you for manifestation of power. Man of God. You're in a new level. God bless you sir. Amen. Let's clap for them please as we get back to the seat. Put your right hand on your head. See my head is a good head. My life is a good life. Injustified in my battles. Favor is on my side. This is my year of supernatural. I might turn around. No matter what the matter is. I will matter when it matters most. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. My time is here. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. And don't forget this week is Holy Ghost Convention. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't forget to, to tune in. I might be we might be a one of these days this week. If you can, if you want, you could come and watch um the uh, article with us. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Please I know we have we celebrated the May birthday last week. Oh yeah.